Hey everyone, today we're talking about the biggest barriers to bike commuting and some tips for overcoming each of them. I'm Tom and this is Shifter, a channel about urban cycling, bike commuting and the ways we get around our cities. If you like this video, please consider subscribing or supporting this channel by hitting that super thanks button. So if you're new to bike commuting and you don't live in one of those amazing cities where there are great protected networks of bike lanes and human scaled streets and a better balance between cars and odd humans, I feel you. A lot of us live in those cities as well. And if you're like a lot of people like me and live in one of those car dominated cities, it can be tough. It can be intimidating to get started bike commuting. But there are so many good reasons to be a bike commuter. So today I thought I would take a look at some of those barriers or at least some of the perceived barriers and offer some tips that I've picked up over the years to overcoming them. Well, let's get started. Okay, barrier number one, I don't have the right kind of bike. So I hear this from people all the time. They're reluctant to start bike commuting because they feel like they don't have the right kind of bike. And my pithy answer is always the best kind of bike for your commute is the bike that you have. Any bike can work. And if you've got one, get out there and use it. And that works because I think it's important to get started and then figure out things as you go rather than trying to figure out everything at the beginning because experience teaches you so much. So if you have your hands on a bike or if you can borrow a bike, just get started and then make some adjustments as you go. But if you don't have a bike and you need to buy something to get started, here are three rules, general rules that I look for in a good commuter bike. Number one, make sure it has a rear rack or the ability to take a rear rack because you're gonna have to carry some stuff more on this later. Number two, think about the minimum number of gears you're going to want to use and then reduce it a little bit more. There you go, that's the perfect number of gears. I find a lot of commuter bikes have way more gears than you need, which is needless and wasteful. And number three, think comfort before speed, which can be tough if you're in a bike shop or a culture like here in North America where cycling is all about racing. Think comfort though, it's really important. Good rules? Okay, I've got more. All right, so here's a little bit more detail if you want it. If your commute is short, say seven or eight kilometers or less than five miles or so, I say go for a comfortable, upright city cruiser or Dutch style bike. These bikes are practical, they're fun to ride, they're comfortable, they'll last forever, and they're affordable in most cases too. So that is a great option when you're just getting started for those shorter commutes. If your commute is longer, say between seven or eight miles or maybe around 15 kilometers, Go for one of those what they call hybrid bikes here in North America. Those are the ones that look a bit like a mountain bike, but they have maybe skinnier tires or a bit more sleek, a bit lighter than a mountain bike. Those are good for commuting. Uh, they're a little bit more efficient, a little bit faster. They'll get you places without as much effort, but they're still a little bit comfortable and are pretty versatile as well. So that's a good option. If your commute is even longer than that, longer than say 15 kilometers or seven or eight miles, you've got a couple of options. I'd say you might wanna go full road bike or that's a, a really fast bike a really efficient one that's got drop drop handlebars you know so you can get low and get into an efficient riding position and really want to go fast just if you go with one of those bikes make sure it's still got some practical sides to it you still want to carry your stuff on a rack you don't want it to be like a delicate carbon fiber you know expensive racing bike because it, on a commute it's going to get beat up a little bit it's going to have to be a little bit strong so be careful there and your other option for a really long commute this is kind of a no-brainer e-bike barrier number two is uh, i don't know what to wear after trying all kinds of athletic wear and cycling clothing over the years my advice for a perfect bike commute is don't wear any of that stuff just wear your office clothes wear whatever it is you wear when you get to work I just think it's so much easier to dress normally and slow your ride down, go for a relaxing ride rather than trying to power through everything. You get to work, you just roll in and start working. You don't have to worry about bringing extra clothes or changing or anything like that. Just dress for your destination and not the journey. However, and I know some of you like to use your bike commute as your exercise, as your workout. In that case, I say I still don't recommend wearing cycling clothes. Just wear regular athletic wear. I like shorts with pockets and I like baggier shirts instead of tight cycling bibs because the air flows through and keeps me a little bit cooler. The other advantage of wearing just regular athletic wear is when you inevitably stop on the way to work or on the way home to pick up some groceries or something, you can walk into the store and buy stuff without having to waddle around with you know, spilling out of your, your tight shirt and picking lycra out of your butt crack. It's just better. Barrier number three, sweat. I don't want to get sweaty at work. Okay, I understand this. It's, there's no easy way to avoid getting sweaty when you ride your bike to work. And sure, it'd be better if we live in a society where we all embrace our natural musks, but 
that's not the world we live in right now. So here are a few tips to avoid becoming the person at the office that everybody avoids. Number one, slow down. The faster you ride, the more energy you put into it, the more you'll sweat. Just slow it down. Number two, leave earlier in the day. It tends to be cooler earlier in the day, and so you're less likely to sweat in cooler weather. So get up a little bit earlier and it might pay off. Number three, take the slower routes that go into the valleys or down by bodies of water near rivers or lakes. If that's available in your city, those tend to be a little bit cooler and can help stave off the sweat a little bit. Number four, e-bike. I mean, the less power you put in, the less sweat you're gonna generate. Another idea might be trying a multimodal commute. So if you find your commute is too long and too sweaty, can you take your bike onto a bus or a train about halfway there and then get off and ride the rest of the way? That might help you just avoid that little bit of sweat at the end. Uh, how about this one? Get a job where nobody cares if you're sweaty or not. That works. And finally, if all else fails, find, have a shower at work. Just be aware that this comes with, with some logistics. So first of all, you've got to find a shower. Many offices have showers, but if not, look around the area for a rec center or a gym, and maybe you can just pop in there and use the shower. Sometimes a small fee will come with that, but you've also got to plan a little bit more when you're showering because you need to bring an extra pair of clothes or extra shoes, towel, shampoo, soap, all that works. So it definitely works. I know tons of people who do this, but it does take a little bit more logistics, which is why I just like riding in my regular clothes. The fourth barrier is, but I've got a lot of stuff to carry to work. I get this, computers, lunches, tools, papers, clipboards, I don't know, people have stuff to bring to work. That's just how work works. And you might be tempted to throw all your stuff in a backpack, but let me stop you there. Rule number one in carrying your stuff on a commute is to get it off your back and get it onto your bike. Let your bike do all of the work. Step number one is to get a good sturdy rack. So make sure your bike has eyelets that it can actually mount a rack to. That's super important. The next step is to find something to carry your stuff using the rack. I prefer panniers or for my American friends, panniers. This is my great two wheel gear bag and I love this bag because it's so strong and sturdy also converts to a backpack, but it carries a lot of stuff. I can easily fit a computer, a lunch, some extra clothing in there, no problem. But there are a million different bags out there. Uh, so look around for one that will work for you. Make sure it's got a lot of space, make sure it's gonna last, make sure it's not too heavy. All those things are really important. If you don't like the bag, you can always go with a basket, although you just need to be aware that things can bounce out of a basket. If that's the case, you might wanna get a cargo net to put over top of it. Uh, baskets can work great. But if you don't like baskets and you don't like bags, your last option, and I love this option too, the venerable milk crate. Go for the milk crate on the back. You can carry all kinds of stuff that way. Barrier number five is my commute's too long or it's close cousin, my commute has too many hills. To me, this feels like a problem of output. Both of those scenarios means that your commute has more output than you're willing to give to it. And there's no easy way to get around this, but here's a few tips. Number one is just get stronger. I, I really feel like if you're just getting started and you ride your bike through that tough commute, after a week or two, you might not notice it immediately, but someday you'll look up and realize, hey, that hill wasn't so hard today, or, oh, I got way faster today. You're going to get stronger. You're going to build up that strength and that endurance, and your commute is going to get easier. Unfortunately, there's no shortcut. You just got to put in the work, bro. If hills are a problem, there's a couple of things you can do. One is change your mindset. So I feel like a lot of people approach hills by going to the easiest gear and just like spinning madly so they're not putting any pressure on their muscles. Change your mindset. Think of that hill like a bike racer thinks of the hill in which you need to attack that hill. That hill is your adversary. You don't like spin your way up it, you power up it. You get the perfect gear where you're outputting every ounce of muscle from your legs is going to propel you forward. You tackle that hill. That's a better way of uh, getting up a hill than just spinning and spinning and spinning until you want to fall off your bike. Or if the hill is just too big for you, it's just not that great, there is the option of rather than trying to tackle the hill, outsmart it. Find a new route around the hill, multimodal it, take the bus up to the top and then take your bike from there. There's a few ways to think about it. You may have to outsmart that hill. And if neither of those works for a hill or a long commute, e-bike. Number six is the weather conditions in my city are too bad. Now, I've heard pretty much every version of this barrier that you can imagine. My city's too hot. My city's too cold. My city's too dry. My city's too rainy. My city's too snowy. And you know what? 
maybe it is. Maybe your city is too bad to ride a bike in. But I can guarantee you that somebody somewhere is probably riding in worse conditions than you're thinking about. I've seen grandmothers riding through winters in the Arctic Circle. I've heard from people who ride through monsoons in the tropics. I've heard from people who ride in cities so windy that the suicide rate in that city is abnormally high. So if they can do it, there's probably a way that it can be done. So this is maybe a long way of saying, buck up, just figure it out. You know, if there is a barrier because of weather, there's clothing, there's gear, there's techniques, there's all kinds of things that you can do to overcome that. So just a blanket say, I can't do it because of conditions is not a great response. Also, you don't have to do it every day. Just do it on the days when the weather meets your expectations. Barrier number seven, my city is too dangerous. If the fear of getting run over by a car is preventing you from riding your bike to work, I get this. Very few cities in the world, especially here in North America, have done much to accommodate cycling. Our streets are continued to be built for cars and car dominance, and riding alongside moving automobiles can be terrifying for people. I get it. The only true solution to this is to fix your city. Start advocating for a change in the way your city develops. This means building safe separated bike lanes. It means reducing the dominance of the automobile, building streets for people instead of for cars. And yeah, that takes a long time. It can take decades. But remember the old Japanese proverb, the best time to start building a bike friendly city was 30 years ago. The second best time is today. Well, there's my piece of wisdom for today, but I do have a couple of other thoughts if you're really scared to ride your bike. One is some perspective. Cycling is an exceedingly safe way of getting around a city. By some studies, cycling is basically on par with walking and driving as far as fatality and injury rates go. Yet, cycling is the only one where we think of it as being dangerous. Part of this, I think, is because in a lot of places, especially here in North America, we think of cycling as a sport, and with sport comes the risk of injury, with bike racing comes the risk of crashes, and that feels like a dangerous pursuit, or at least something that requires safety gear. But cycling doesn't have to be a sport. You can ride your bike in a completely different way. You can ride it slowly and out for pleasure and take it nice and easy. So my piece of advice on this is maybe don't let the culture of athletic cycling influence the way you think about it. Cycling is a safe thing to do in cities and don't lose sight of that. And there are a couple of practical things you can do to make it safer. You know, choose routes that are on less busy streets. Um, ride in a group of people. There are some studies that say uh, group rides uh, are safer than people riding on their own. Um, so there are a few little things you can do to make it safer. But no matter what you do, as you're doing all this, let's keep advocating for better cities. And my last tip is to not lose sight of the best part of bike commuting, and that's the simple joy of riding a bike. We've had a beautiful autumn here. In the last couple of weeks, I caught myself a few times just stopping and taking a deep breath and enjoying the colors and the weather and the vibe. You can't do that in a car. And I think sometimes we get so wrapped up in the practicalities of cycling that we forget that riding a bike is great. It's one of the simple pleasures in life. And so don't forget that. Anyway, if you have any more tips, please share them down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.